The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Our next guest, Christy, met her husband on a blind date. They were inseparable from that very first meeting. But over time, their happy marriage began to change. Have a look. Bill and I met about eight years ago. He was this big, massive bodybuilder, but he had the heart of a little teddy bear and always made me feel really special. Every day he would give me a red rose. I loved that about him. Bill and I got married in 2005. I noticed a change in Bill's personality after about four years of marriage. The glass was always half empty. The isolation, the insomnia. He wasn't eating, he was losing weight. And that wasn't the person that I'd married. Bill was talking about taking his own life on a daily basis. And at that point, I knew I needed to do something now. I wanted that old Bill back. And I knew that if I could find that right pill, that right psychologist, that everything would be okay. Now the paranoia is starting to set in. One afternoon, he barricaded me in the bathroom. He accused me of cheating, and he said, I'm not gonna let you out until you tell me who it is. And at that point is when I started to be afraid of my own husband. So I managed to push through one of his arms, and I grabbed a bag, and I walked out the door to spend the night at my sister's. He had called his dad in Houston, Texas, and he said, Dad, I'm in trouble. He said, Christy has left. His dad boarded the next flight to San Diego. And when he got to San Diego, he boarded a train. Early in the morning, he checked my phone, and there were about 20 messages. So I dialed the number, and Bill's mother answered. And she said, Christy, there's been an accident. And I think Bill might be dead. And I remember feeling like all the blood was just draining out of me at that moment, because I knew that wasn't an accident. Bill had completed suicide by standing in front of a Metrolink train. Bill's dad was a passenger on the train that Bill ran in front of. I felt overwhelming guilt. If I hadn't given up, if I'd only gotten him the mental health care, he would be okay. And this is my fault. I just felt like the worst human being on the planet. I miss my husband every day. Everything reminds me of Bill, the train whistle, the train tracks, he's everywhere. Christy joins us now along with psychotherapist, Dr. Mike Dow, and Christy, I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Right now, as you sit here, where are you at on that journey of overcoming this grief and this guilt? You know, every day, Every day is different. The guilt that I felt after his suicide is no longer there. I know that I did everything that I could. I took him to psychiatrist, to the church, to psychologist. And Bill was buying into that stigma, mental illness. He was a middle-aged yeah. man. Yeah. And that's so not hard. cool to say, hey, I have depression or I, I have a mental illness. I'm so glad you brought that so up. So he would not own it. And when we, when we would sit in that psychiatrist's office and I would go in there with him because I knew he would lie. Mm -hmm. And the doctor would say, have you thought of taking your own life? And he would look over at me and I would say, don't lie. Good. And he would Good. say, yes, I have thought about it. And they would say, do you have a plan? Uh -huh. And he would say, not really. Uh -huh. And so we would walk out of there with a different medication. You know, he supposedly took 20 Ambien and, and he left me a suicide note. And it said, Christy, I can't do this anymore. You deserve someone better. I love you, Bill. And next to that note was an empty bottle of Ambien. And I had picked up that prescription, so I knew that there were at least 20 pills in there. But yet I heard him in the shower. Mm. So I was really confused and I ran into the shower and I said, Bill, what are you doing? And he said, I took the 20 Ambien and I still woke up this morning. Mm. So I called my sister and she drove out to see us. We sat on the bed with Bill for two hours and we said, Bill, please get in the car. You need help. When we walked in, the nurse grabbed him and said, don't worry, ma'am. He's in good hands. And I thought, finally, we're going to get the help that we need. Mm -hmm. And after three days of being on a 5150, which is a three-day involuntary mm -hmm. suicide watch, mm -hmm. 
And they asked him, do you want to kill yourself? And he said, no, I just couldn't sleep. And they released him. 